Today, we're going to be talking about something that is possibly something that will change your view of autism forever. I'm talking about cognitive empathy. This series is for any of you who are of the neurotypical variety, the non-autistic group, who are in a relationship or dating an autistic person. What are the challenges that you can expect? What are the good things? What are the ways that you can cross some of those challenges and and find a stronger, more intimate bond for a long-term relationship? This is the series for you. And if you're autistic, there's definitely going to be things in here that maybe you weren't aware that you were doing, and maybe you might want to try and improve the future, and some things that you can learn just about general dating. A lot of the things that I mention, they're good for most relationships. It's just that they're more important, and they're a little bit more nuanced when it comes to ND, NT, neurodiverse relationships. So let's get into cognitive empathy. Why doesn't my partner know when I'm sad? Why don't they know when I'm emotional? Why, why can't they see that I'm in pain, why, that I'm in emotional discomfort? It really doesn't, it, it doesn't really lend itself to me feeling cared about and understood and supported in a long-term relationship. There are some difficulties around autism um, to do with empathy, but not particularly in the way that you think. The idea that autistic people don't have empathy has been debunked. We do. I can tell you as an autistic adult, I feel empathy extremely strongly. But there are two types of empathy. You have cognitive empathy and af affective empathy. Affective empathy being showing a appropriate response to someone's certain state, their emotions, their experiences, their nag bad things, their negative things. Cognitive empathy, on the other hand, is the ability to notice those things. The ability to know that you're another person is feeling a certain way, not based on direct communication. You can see, kind of see where I'm going with this. <laughs> Having a deficit in cognitive empathy can make it extremely difficult to build a strong bond if you don't know that the other person it struggles with that, that type of empathy. I did a podcast episode with Professor Simon Baron-Cohen, Professor Baron-Cohen rather, and we talked all about his research into empathy, comparing psychopathy with autism. And they sort of show inverse profiles, psych psychopaths showing immensely strong cognitive empathy so they can manipulate you and they know that you're in pain, but they don't care. But they also have a very low adaptive empathy. So they don't show the appropriate response. It's all about them. They don't really care. They're just using their ability to see your emotions as a tool, as a weapon, as a method to manipulation. The autistic, it's the complete opposite. Lower cognitive empathy. Adaptive empathy, I would argue, probably higher than most people. We tend to be people who have a lot of negative, bad life experiences in a lot of different areas, even just in, in terms of mental health. And so, you know, people who've gone through negative experiences and pain, they're more likely to be a bit more empathetic than usual uh, to people who are, are in similar circumstances or feeling similar emotions. So going back to cognitive empathy and that situation where you're in a room with your partner you feel like you're pretty much expressing that you are in deep emotional pain. You are very sad, but it's not so overt. Um, it, you're not like crying. You're not, you know, expressing very strong changes in body language and facial expressions and tone of voice. And so you're kind of at a level where the autistic person isn't aware. You may be guilty of this, and a lot of people are, but even if they do notice a little bit, and they say, are you okay? And you say, yeah, I'm fine. You know, most people would take that as, okay, something's not fine. What's wrong? What's wrong with them? Ah, um, <laughs> as an autistic person, we place a lot of weight on verbal trust, especially to do with emotions. So if you say, I'm fine, and, you, and they ask you again, and you say, are you sure? And you say, yeah, I'm fine. It doesn't matter how you say it, if you tell them that you're fine, they're gonna think they're gonna assume that you're fine. So that's one of the first pitfalls that you can get in that in that situation. 
another one would could be so you're in that place you're not feeling good you're kind of expecting something from your partner but you don't so you drag it out you drag it out for ages you carry on hold on to that as a as a source of resentment towards your partner for a long period of time and never address it uh, those are the two bad ways of, of coping with it. Now I want to highlight again that this this information will help anybody in a relationship. A lot of people in relationships will really not have the best communication skills and they're not going to say how they, you can help. If you're in a healthy relationship that has good communication, the person is going to say to you, I'm feeling really bad today. I've had a really bad time. And you go, oh, I'm really sorry about that. Can I help? And it's literally as simple as that. But it's not that it doesn't feel that simple if you're in a long-term relationship and you don't have that open communication. And a lot of it's based on expectations and the other person being able to pick up on your mood. It becomes worse if you're with an autistic person because those deficits, in the natural deficits in cognitive empathy may mean that they don't pick up on it as much as most people so it places even more importance on communication, verbal communication of emotions. Autistic people were, were more likely to describe and explain and go into depth on certain feelings and emotions and experiences verbally or through direct communication like signing and, and all that jazz, but not through, through non-verbal cues like emotion, facial expressions, body language, tone of voice. So there's, 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 a, there's a really big disconnect between between uh, the both of you. And it's really, it's, I highly stress the importance of developing that open communication because there will be numerous examples of this happening throughout the relationship. If every single time that that happens, it turns into something negative, you stew on it, you confront them about it, you get angry at them for it, that's gonna put a lot of stress on your relationship. And in actuality, maybe they just don't know maybe you've told them that you're okay. It's not their fault that they were born that way, that they have those natural, inherent difficulties with cognitive empathy. So it's important to, to be aware of that and to try and work around it. It may take you a while to, to do that, but I would highly encourage you to do that. It will absolutely change your, your emotional experience and openness and vulnerability with each other. Just for the autistic person, and specifically to know if you've got a problem, if you're feeling bad, you're going to tell them. And they don't have to worry about that. And on the other side, you will get what you want. You will get what will help. You may have to do a bit of thinking about what will help you in those circumstances and communicate that. And although that might feel like a little bit of work, it is important to put work into a relationship some way or another. And if you're putting all that negative energy in because they're not getting how you're feeling based on something that they can't see, um, it's gonna make, it's gonna be a big problem. Do it on your own. Try and understand this concept. Learn a bit more about cognitive empathy and autism, and then try and adjust your behaviour and see if you get the response that you want. Nine times out of ten, you will get the response that you want because they have adaptive empathy. They care about you. Distance yourself from the concept that the perfect romantic partner, your true love, would always know how you feel and always know what to do at any circumstance, any point in, in life. Distance yourself from that notion. Make up that, that empty space with communication and openness and vulnerability. And that will do absolute wonders for your relationship. If it does happen that they don't give you the right response and you've explained it pretty thoroughly and you've explained it in a nice way, you're not being combative, you're not being confrontational, and they still don't get it into their head. Try and again, try different things, try different ways of thinking about it. And if none of that works, just tell them that you're trying to, to get over that barrier. And if they're not gonna be reciprocal of that, and they're not gonna put in the effort the other way, not everyone's a good person, not everyone's nice. Some people are assholes, some people don't care. And some people might be psychopaths. So I'm going to leave you on that note. <laughs> always, there's always ways to get around things. If you're in a 
relationship with someone that you admire and that you love and that you enjoy you'll also have something some difficulties in in some aspects of the relationship if you want to stay up to date with all that stuff you can um say subscribed you can like the video if you found it helpful uh, i know a lot of youtubers say this but it really does help push my videos out there because it takes a while to film and edit and put it out and you wouldn't believe how much effort it requires to make one small video <laughs> And of course, if you want to stay up to date with the work that I'm doing outside of YouTube and podcasting and all that, the public speaking, the training, the judging, the oh, there's a lot of different stuff that you can stay up to date by following my Instagram. And if you want to listen to the podcast, the first season of the 40 Oti podcast is in full. It's on available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and a whole host of different places. The website, thomashenley.co.uk, and of course... If you want to support my work, there is the join button directly below this video. You can give one pound, one pound a month to support me. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've taken something from it. What things do you want me to talk about? Is there an issue that you have with an autistic partner and I haven't covered it yet? Please drop it down below. And equally, if you're autistic yourself and you feel like this resonates with you quite a fair bit, please put it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Take it easy. Take it easy on yourself. See you later, folks.